All right, let's get started. Well, welcome everybody to this exciting Belize 101 presentation. If you've been down to Belize before, you may know some of this information. I'm guessing you'll find a lot of new information as well. If you haven't been before, well, we're really excited for you to be on to learn more about this really beautiful country. We are based currently in San Pedro on Ambergris Key, Belize. It's the largest key off the coast of Belize mainland. And we have the beautiful reef right out there. We're looking at it now. It's beautiful, uh, beautiful, sunny, and uh, our blue reef out there. So really pretty. And we're going to just jump right in and get started. All right. So uh, hello, my name is Rachel Jensen. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for ECI Development. I currently live here in Belize. I've been coming down to the country since 2012. I was originally living in Nicaragua, coming back and forth all the time, and ultimately decided that I wanted to call Belize home. In 2016, I decided to uh, decide to buy a condo here and have been uh, living here ever since. And it's been a really phenomenal experience. What's really been keeping me here is the people, uh, the culture, this really laid back sort of mentality I grew up in New York and you're just used to the hustle there and every time I go back you just see how people are in this rat race and it just becomes so typical to wake up go to work eat sleep and then just do that on repeat and here you find that people really are enjoying their life and you know taking a step back and, and really taking it all in and so here it's it's just a really relaxing pace of life and there's still tremendous opportunities for those of you who do want to work and find things to do when you're down here. But I started investing in real estate before I started investing in real estate in the state. So I started investing here in Latin America first and then kind of went a little bit backwards, decided to look at opportunities in the States. And ownership of real estate here in this part of the region is definitely a little different than it is in North America, but there are really incredible opportunities right now. And so we're gonna talk just about a couple of them towards the end of the webinar. What we really wanted to do now was go through the country as a whole with you. But I'm really excited to have my co-host here, Leslie Lawrence. This is Leslie's debut on the webinars with us. And uh, Leslie, why don't you give us a little bit more about you and your story? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. It's my very first one. I'm so excited to be a property consultant with ECI now. So I'm a small town East Texas girl. So shout out to all the Texas people I saw. Most recently, I had a home on North Shore of Lake Travis. So I know there was some Austin one that I saw. But I came to Belize uh, once on a cruise like a long time ago, but didn't really count that. And then I came to Amber's Key March of 2018 and I fell in love. It was one of those same stories that you heard. I loved like visiting with all the people and the expats here. And it was that same thing. Like I literally went swimming with the sharks, which I <laughs> never thought I would do because I watched Jaws one too many times. <laughs> and they were like, oh, they're the puppies of the sea. So I did it and I was, I, I was so happy. Like I was like, this is the most joyful experience of my life. And so from that moment on, when I went home, I was like, how do I go back? And I started selling things. I sold everything I own. I sold the boat, the Corvette, the house. I mean, literally everything. I have a tiny little storage unit left in uh, Georgetown, Texas. But I came back in December of 2018 and I was going back and forth a lot. I was finishing out a 20 year consulting career there. I was kind of like Rachel said, that rat race, I was in it for 20 years and it was a great you know, career for me, but I wanted something different. I came here and I was relaxed and the community and the, the people here were just amazing. And so I up and left it all and came and have never looked back. And then this opportunity came around a few months ago and I'm learning about all of our properties. Of course, Belize is near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. So I was very excited for this to be my first one. And we have a discovery tour coming up. You'll hear about later. Mm -hmm. And I really am excited about that because I get to share why I love Belize so much. Okay. So fantastic. And one thing that I do want to point out here is that the picture on the bottom left of the screen was taken from this past weekend. Uh, one of the, the bars and restaurants here, they had a, a pot liquor competition. Pot liquor is what they call the local dogs. And Leslie has a pot liquor. And Leslie's dog, Libby, placed number one in the pot liquor competition. So we were I'm very a <laughs> dog mom. We That's were... my Livy love. And I don't want to forget my Lizzie. She's 
not up here, but I do have a rescue <laughs> from Texas that I brought to the islands with me. So you can bring your pets. That's mm -hmm. another great thing about Belize. It was very easy to do. So we can talk about that later as well. Um, I am known to have kind of a Wonder Woman, like crazy <laughs> thing going on. So I carved my very first pineapple. Yes. I had never done it. That's what that picture is all about. Instead of a pumpkin. And I won uh -huh. the pineapple carving <laughs> contest at Wyo's one year, which was super fun. Uh, again, it's just the experiences mm -hmm. and the people. I, I'm learning to sell. I'm learning to scuba dive. So there's so many great things you can do here. Absolutely. All righty. So just a quick overview about ECI development. We're a real estate development company that's based here in Latin America. We're pro we have properties all across the region started about uh, 25 years ago. And so we're going to obviously focus more on Belize today and just quickly highlight at the end the Belize real estate opportunities. But we are all throughout the region. So we're in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and also looking at future developed land or developable, developable land in Argentina, Ecuador, and Chile. So our goal over the past couple of decades has to be able to is to be able to provide affordable but luxurious real estate for consumers who are coming down for folks who want to relocate here to this beautiful island or even for investors who are just looking at real estate ownership from the investment perspective. Uh, in addition to that, we do have the agricultural side of it, which is ownership of teak. In the two countries we're in there it's panama and nicaragua and we've paired that up with residency programs which we'll talk about another week and next week in another session uh, but we really started here in belize in 1998 when we picked up a beach resort known as exotic key beach resort at this point exotic key has been disassembled it was an old hotel at the time that we acquired it and uh, we've made room now for the upcoming Marriott project. But I don't want to bore you too much with these details. So we're going to start off with the first question here. Leslie, why don't you read it for us? Absolutely. So we want to know, have you been to Belize yet? And find right there in that Q&A section where you typed in where you're calling from if you have been to Belize. Yes, if uh, A, type A if you have, or B, not yet. I'm just curious to see what we, we have here. So Dusty says many times, I see A, A, yes, B, 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 A, B, B. I don't need to read these all to you guys. <laughs> but it, it looks like there's a, a pretty good mix of both. Some folks who've been here quite a few times. So awesome. I'm happy to see that. It looks like some buddies have they owned real estate here at one time. Um, but awesome. I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, you're familiar with it. And those of you who haven't been, you're looking for opportunities. So what we're going to talk about in the next hour here is why Belize? Why is it that people are vacationing here? Why are they buying real estate down here? Why are they living down here? In addition to that, we're going to go through the Belize real estate misconceptions and reality. This is really critical uh, for those of you who are looking at real estate here in Belize. Maybe you are not one of those people who said that you have real estate here, but it's important for you to know the key differences between ownership real estate in your home country and here in Belize. Uh, but I'm going to just say that as a foreigner, you do get full title to your property. So just know that going into this. In addition, we're going to talk about the hottest spot in Belize. We're going to cover just a couple of quick real estate opportunities. We're going to go through a questions and answer section. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to jot those down in that Q&A section, and then we'll get to that at the end. I know I had a couple of you email me questions before, so I have those jotted down and we'll go through those as well. And then we have a free gift for you at the end of the webinar, so make sure you stay tuned. Leslie, why don't you tell us a little bit more Absolutely. about the country? Absolutely. So just a couple little quick facts about Belize. The total population is around 370,000, so basically about the size of Massachusetts. Um, the currency, everybody always wants to know how that works. It's very simple here. It's two Belize dollars to one US dollar. So don't panic if you go to the grocery store and you see something that's $40. Be sure and deduct it. <laughs> Divide it by two. Yes, yeah. make it simple. Um, but I love it because it's very simple to use. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, some more tips and tricks about the money later. Fantastic. So why Belize? As you can see here in the map, it's the proximity to North America. It takes about two hours from Houston. Yes, that was one of my deciding factors was that I was a quick trip to Texas. For those Texas people, it's super easy to get back to friends and family. And that was one of the deciding factors for me. Exactly. And I know a lot of people are coming down here as well as an alternative to Cancun or Costa Rica uh, because well, we'll talk about it in a second. English is the official language. But when you add those two factors in being close to the US, we're two hours from Texas, two and a half hours, three hours from Atlanta, two and a half hours from Miami. Uh, there are a lot of other connecting um, other hubs where the, the planes are coming from, but it's easy enough to get down here. 
And so here are the examples of the flights. And so is, with COVID right now, some of these flights aren't flying, uh, but there have been a handful that have been added since the border reopened in October. But you're able to get here from Charlotte, Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, Dallas, Denver, um, LA, and then Newark. I know they're, they're doing direct too. And then we also have direct flights here in Belize going to Cancun. And then uh, they will be resuming to El Salvador and Guatemala. So it is easy enough to get here. I know with COVID, it just has a, a couple more elements to the travel, uh, but it is still possible to get here. And uh, I will mention that in order to get into the country, you do need to take a PCR test within 96 hours of traveling. It needs to show negative results, as you can imagine, or you can take a rapid test within 48 hours of traveling and present that. So once you're here, there's no quarantine. Uh, right now we do have a curfew, but we're gonna get a new SI in February, being in February, so we'll see if that changes. But everything really happens during daylight here. And so it's uh, even with that curfew, it still is a really neat place, place to be. And then once you get into the country, there are a couple of regional air carriers, Tropic Air and Maya Air. So you're able to get from location to location. I think at the widest point, um, our friend was recently telling us that Belize is about 79 miles. So it's really not that wide of a country. There are only a few road and highways within the country. So it takes a little bit of time to get from location to location. So you can always rent a car. If you're going out to the islands and the Keys, you can take a water taxi. Or if you want a quick trip, you can take the puddle jumpers is what we call them, the regional air carriers. They fit about, about 15 people. It's, uh, it's And it's normal, you know, that's what we call the air taxi to be able to go from Ambergris Key, we're on the islands out on the east side of the country, to be able to get into Belize City, which is where you have the international airport. There's a city municipal airport there too. So it's easy enough to get from location to location once you get in the country. And I, I will say for some people, friends that have come, they're a little not sure about the pedal jumper. They're <laughs> like, it's kind of small, but let me tell you, it will be the best flight you have ever taken in your life. You fly low and the views of the actual colors the yeah. different blues in the water it's amazing so you have to do it it's true and one of the the tips that i got the very first time i came out on the puddle jumper in 2012 was to sit on the right hand side of the plane and that's specifically if you're coming out to amber grisky and if you sit on the right hand side of the plane you're going to get stunning views of the reef and it's the largest living reef in the world. But just note that the, the reef is not the blue hole. I, I first, I was ignorant at first. I thought it was the blue hole. So hopefully you're all smarter than I am, but uh, the reef is just an incredible barrier reef that parallels the country. And you get to see that straight uh, from your window as you're taking that puddle jumper. Or if you don't want to take the puddle jumper, you can always take the water taxi. That can be exciting too. I've done that a lot as well. Exactly. All right, what is the next question okay, here? Here we go, are you ready? How many districts are there in Belize? All right, so A, if you think there are five districts, find that Q&A section again. B, if you think there are six districts. C, if you think there are seven. Or D, if you think there are 10. We're going to go through the answers at the end. Hopefully nobody is, uh, is, is cheating over there. But all right, let's see. A, we see A, C, seven districts, seven districts, six districts, eight districts. All right, so we have a, a mix of answers over there. We're going to go through it at the end. Uh, and then I want to share this tip with you is something that I learned along the way is be co uh, use coconut oil around your ankles to beat no Um in the sand. Sometimes you get those little no that are biting your ankle. You can just put coconut oil on your ankle and it'll um, be a lot more difficult for the no to get through that. So you can use this in any of the countries that you are visiting as well. Okay, so why Belize? It's a familiar yet, yet exotic common law and English, of course, is the official language. So for me, I did mm -hmm. have Spanish growing up and a little in college, but I'm not fluent by any means. So that was another big factor for me that English is the official language. Fantastic. And you will hear Creole spoken quite a bit in Spanish. Uh, it's not uncommon for a lot of the locals to know all three, uh, or maybe they don't know any Spanish, but they do learn English in school. So it is the official language. And the fun, the fun reason for that is because uh, this was a former, Belize was a former British colony. They got their independence in 1981. Mm -hmm. But as a result, English is what's spoken here all around the uh, all around Latin America is Spanish. But this is the, the one unique country there. And then in addition to that, there's this financial and banking security. Uh, from the financial side, a lot of people who are living here and investing here like the fact that there's no capital gains or estate tax. In addition to that, if you're planning to invest in the country through real estate, there's only 1.75% investment income tax. 
And then what a lot of people like, especially if they're looking to park their assets, uh, financial assets overseas, is they like looking for a bank that has liquidity. And uh, with one of the banks that we work with, specifically Key Bank, they are required to have 24% liquidity in their bank at any point. So for every dollar that goes in, they must have about a quarter of that liquid, which is huge. Not a lot of banks have that. And then if you're looking to take your first step offshore, getting a bank account in another country uh, is a great way to do that. You know, I heard the concept, you probably heard of the concept of planting your fi five flags in different countries. So where you have your citizenship, where you have your residency, where you have a bank account, where you live, where you invest. And so through getting a bank account in another country, you help to diversify yourself. You don't put all of your eggs in one basket, as I'm sure many of you have heard that term before. So it just helps you um, from, from that regard, if anybody like more information about KeyBank, they're located here on the island with us as an international bank. They do finance on properties uh, throughout Latin America. So if you're a foreigner, so this is important for you to know if you're looking at real estate, is KeyBank can serve as a financial institution for you for financing. And then just email us there at banking at ecidevelopment.com, banking at ecidevelopment.com if you would like more information about KeyBank and their services. Okay, another great thing about Belize is they have attractive residency programs. So we have what's called the QRP program, and you have to be at least 45 years of age, which I qualify for that, but that's the only thing that I qualify <laughs> in. You have to spend 30 days a year in the country. You can bring in duties item free, which is huge. So boats, you know, golf carts, things you, if you're living on the island, you'd want a mm -hmm. golf cart. Yes. So if you come in on QRP, know that you can bring in items duty free. Uh, the big thing is though, you cannot work. You truly are retired mm -hmm. under the QRP. Then you have permanent residency. You can be any age. You must live in the country for at least one year. Um, during that time, you can be gone up to 14 days yep, during that exactly. one year period. You can work in the country and it can lead to a passport after five years. Exactly, and so it's important to note which, and there's one more residency we're gonna talk about, but if you are planning to come in and just retire here or you're not planning on working, then the QRP would be great for you. But we've had people who've tried to apply for the QRP, but then they wanna start an Airbnb down here or work to some capacity. Uh, start a business and you're not able to do that. So just bear that in mind as you are considering your options. Um, and then there's a new residency that came out. It's the investor residency. And you have to invest at least $250,000 into an investment property. And for this one, you can uh, add your dependents, you can add your spouse, you can add your children up to 18. You do not need to live in the country. And after five years, it can lead to citizenship. Now do note that this is a, a, a permanent re or temporary residency, rather it's a temporary residency. You have to renew it every year for five years. And then after the fifth year, it becomes permanent. And at that point you're able to apply for your passport. So we've had a couple of clients who have taken advantage of this program. They've invested through, uh, through us, through the Marriott, our Merit residences that we have here on Hamburger Key, but you have to be able to show that you've invested at least $250,000 into the country. This isn't retroactive. If you've already invested into the country, you can't apply for this residency now, and it does have to be a certified investment. So just make sure if you are interested in this, you reach out to us about the Marriott residences. We also have a residency booklet, which covers these three residencies in greater depth. If you'd like that, you can see the email address there on the screen, info at ecidevelopment.com, info at ecidevelopment.com, and we'd be happy to send you that overview. All right, also the growing economy. I mean, let's just all put COVID aside. We know that COVID disrupted uh, the economy worldwide, uh, not just in Belize, but worldwide. But we are seeing, despite COVID, that um, if we take COVID out, that the, the economy here in Belize really was growing. And one of the big factors in the economy is tourism. And so from 2009 to 2020, uh, from 2009 to 2019, we saw that there's been a tremendous growth in the tourism industry. And, and not that Belize wasn't known before, but it just wasn't well known. This country was really popular for divers and fishermen because we do have the reef right out there. It's a quarter mile from our current office right now. You're able to look out and see the reef. So people who are water bugs, adventure travelers have been coming to this country since uh, in this island specifically since the 70s. But Belize hired a marketing firm about 10, 12 years ago that really helped them to put the country on the map. It's a small country when you look at, as Leslie said, it's about the size of Massachusetts. So people, you know, a lot of people have been going to Costa Rica and Mexico for years, but they just never heard about Belize. You may know it, for those of you uh, may know it as British Honduras is what it was known formally as, and then they gained their independence in, 
in 81, but over the years it's just can continue to grow. And so we certainly did see a dip uh, when it came to COVID. I think everywhere in the world did. And I do expect that it'll take another year or two before tourism really resumes. And uh, hopefully we see these, these numbers continue to increase. But um, over the years and, and prior to COVID, we just saw incredible growth for the country. And when we're looking at how the economy is doing and how the market's doing, one of the factors that it's important to consider is, are there branded hotels? Is there growth in the hotel industry? Who's there? And over the past few years, uh, we saw that a Hilton opened up a curio collection, an autograph collection uh, is under construction about half a mile south of us. The Belize Merit Residences, we announced in April of 2019, March of 2020, last year, just as this was all uh, starting, we, we announced that we we're gonna be franchising a Best Western property here on Amber Chris Key. So you see these hotel industries, they spend a lot of time, money, energy, resources in locating a new market and finding out where would make sense financially for them to be. So if you're looking at this country from an investment perspective, I think that this is an important thing for you to consider. And this for me, why Belize, I can look out the window right now and tell you why it's absolutely stunning. The nature here, the water, you will, I mean, I've traveled a lot of places in my lifetime and you have to see it. It's just something different about it. So um, Belize is a country I finally got out and exploring mainland some because I came to Amber's Key and I loved it so much. I rarely went anywhere else, but <laughs> I had an opportunity this weekend and I actually got to go in the jungle and I saw live monkeys. I love monkeys and I finally saw and heard live monkeys in the jungle. Did a river boat, pontoon boat and climbed some waterfalls. It was absolutely stunning as well. So I'm excited to go back to mainland. You have Coruscant that's a, a place there on mainland. You have obviously here San Pedro, the Cayo district uh, where we were, turn up a toll, Placencia I hear is fabulous. So that's on my to-do list as well. It's true. And within the country, you know, it's a small country, but there's a lot of different geographies and Corozal is well known. It's, it's close to the, the Mexico border. So for those people that need to have access to large chain stores, for example, like we don't have chain stores here. We don't have the Walmart or the Target or Sam's Club or any of that. And so for people who want to be close and have quick access, they live in places like Corozal, which is close to the Mexican border. You can hop over to Chetamala and have those sort of amenities. Uh, San Pedro is, is a really fun place for people who who want to be in an area that's more developed. They want to be within a community that's established. They don't mind tourists around. Uh, the Cayo District, as Leslie mentioned, is wonderful for hearing monkeys and for <laughs> doing the jungle and, and uh, outdoor activities. Turnipatol is great if you like diving and, and snorkeling. And then Placencia is a, a quieter um, beachfront community as well. You tend to find more single family homes there. And then what to do, Leslie just started to touch upon it, but there's just a, a tremendous amount to do in the country. This is just a couple of things, but there's a lot going on within the country. Whether you like the water or not, you can find water activities and land activities and you'll have an unbelievable time. <laughs> it's fun. You can find many ways to integrate Belize into a- You better believe it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And, yeah, good. Let's get this jump one. in. Okay. Affordable Caribbean real estate and low property taxes. That sounds good, right? For all those looking at property. It is. And so when you're considering Belize from an investment perspective, a real estate investment perspective, it's really understand to important. It's really important to understand what you want at the end of the day. Are you looking for a property that's already in the mature market? Is it cash flowing right now? Typically, if you're looking for something that's cash flowing really well, it's in a mature market and the real estate prices there tend to be more expensive. Think about the countries at the top part of the curve there, Pacific, Costa Rica, for example, Panama, these countries, even uh, Costa Rica, highlands brazil these countries have been around for a while they've been promoted for a while a lot of people know these areas so the prices there have in a sense plateaued and you can even thin slice some of these countries a little bit more like panama but pacific costa rica i think guanacaste the pacific side of, uh, of the country it's been around for the last 25 30 years so prices there are more expensive but you know that you have a tourism market now go down to the bottom part of the screen the bottom part of the chart is where you find countries that are in emerging markets. So this is where you'll invest if you're looking for properties that are going to appreciate over time. You can hold on to a property for 10, 15, 20 years. You can land bank because what your ultimate goal is for it to appreciate. 
Now, all of us want the best of both worlds. I'm sure you want a property that's going to appreciate, you want a property that's gonna cash, cash flow for you. But if you want that, it's really gonna depend where it is you're investing. And so Belize is at that sweet spot right now. It certainly has not plateaued like a Cancun or like a Pacific Costa Rica, but it's not necessarily in a position like Nicaragua. So if you're looking for the best of both worlds, I would most certainly recommend Belize. And we did a couple of comparisons here it is an example of the atlantis and bahamas you probably heard about it but this is a condo that's up for resale it's a one bedroom about 500 square feet going for about six hundred thousand dollars now you can't really compare belize to bahamas at this point belize has a lot of growth to do that's where that appreciation factor comes in but if you hold on to it you'll see that it does have the opportunity to become uh, you know similar in in regards to it being a strong tourism market and then if you look at the example of the Belize Marriott residences, you see uh, the condos for a little bit larger in size being listed for under 400,000. So when you look at the numbers, you can see that, you know, being an early adopter, you know, you may not necessarily be a pioneer at this point. Those were the people who are coming down 25, 30 years ago, but you are definitely somebody who is looking at opportunity before it, it blows up. All right. Another question. What holiday do we celebrate November the 19th? Belize Independence Day, Garifuna Settlement Day, Belize New Year's or Dia de los Muertos. And you can just type A, B, C or D there into the screen and we're gonna read the answers for you at the end. Hopefully you're not cheating over there. Just give it your best guess and uh, we'll, we'll go through the answers at the end. So I'll give you five, four, three, two and one. I'm gonna just take a quick look here to see what a majority of people are saying. We say A, B, I see some put a, a five on there. Uh, we have an A, B, C, all right, we got D, we got a, a good mix of a good mix of guesses there. All right, so this is um, a, a personal tip as well. It's ditch the LaCroix seltzer. And what I mean by that is instead of purchasing brands that you're familiar with from being in your home country, look to see what you can find locally. And, and I remember, I love LaCroix. I was living in New Orleans for a while. You get LaCroix everywhere you go. And I finally found it here in the supermarket. There's a couple, there are a couple of supermarkets here on the island that have a lot of US products. And so I got this case of LaCroix and you know, the States you can get like two or three of these 12 packs for, ten dollars us so i put it on the um the belt to, to pay for it and i think it was like thirty dollars i mean it was just something that was so unbelievably wild i was like do i really need that i can just buy the the local seltzer here for you know a dollar and so it really just makes you reconsider and you'll find as you're here there you're gonna have a lot of those choices you can buy the tostitos for 15 beliefs so seven dollars and fifty cents where in the states they might have been the the supermarket special for 2.99 so you really just learn to to live locally is there something that you you found leslie well, Make a guilty pleasure. I, I still buy the oreos and they're like maybe <laughs> ten dollars for oreos but i can't not have them so i do still frequently get oreos but i'm like her i really you can eat local and you you learn to substitute things exactly. and you, you don't really miss it trust me you don't it's now true. people did ask when i moved here like what were the things that i missed most and i will be honest i was krispy kreme <laughs> sonic sweet tea red hot i can't find red hots here target yeah, and of course, family and friends were number one. That was my thing. Yeah, I can I can see that family and friends, and then you learn that they come and visit. They you might see more of them when you relocate. You do you see more of them here than when you were at home. Sometimes even if you lived in the same town, so exactly. that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right, so now we're going to jump into real estate misconce misconceptions and reality. Uh, I think a lot of you, I would just went through the names before. A lot of you have been in touch at some point about real estate. And hopefully if you haven't considered it yet, it's something that may be on your mind at some point. So we're going to just deep dive into eight misconceptions and then share the reality with you. And why don't you start us off here, Leslie? Absolutely. So real estate agents do not need to be licensed. Depends on the country and there is no MLS here. 
Exactly. So, and that's really, really spot on. So I'm part of the Belize National Association of Realtors. I'm on the board. And one of the things that we're looking to do is make it a requirement for real estate agents to be licensed. It's going to be definitely a long process in order to get that, but you could just go to the beach bar and some guy's going to be selling you a piece of real estate. He may not know anything about it. It might've been sold 10 times over, but uh, you know, you can find that there are some franchises here that are always good to work with, but you know, you'll, you'll learn to do your, your due diligence which is key, you know, not just when you buy here in Belize, but when you are looking um, all across the world. Okay. Another reality is escrow is not common and may not be available in the country that you're looking. Exactly. And so here we really don't find much escrow. If you're working with a developer, uh, if it's pre-construction, hopefully it's on a, a construction progress payment schedule where you're not paying 100% up front. I would never recommend that anybody pays 100% up front for real estate for pre-construction but uh, you, you tend to find that escrow isn't common. Uh, there are some places, some attorneys are able to get it from, but it's, it's gonna cost you. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at real estate here. Okay, and the next one, are you used to titling in 30 to 90 days? Pack your patience, it may take a couple of years. A funny little thing that one of my neighbors when I first moved here told me, if I can get it right, he said, if you don't have patience, and you come to Belize, you will find it. If you come <laughs> with patience, you will lose it. So I found that quite funny. It's cute and it's true. And you know, it's, it's something like I mentioned to you a little bit earlier, I started investing in real estate um, in, in Latin America first. So I, you know, I thought a year, two, three, four getting title was common. And Panama, I think is notorious for being three, four years until you actually get the title. So here in Belize, when it took six, seven months, I was like, wow, yeah, this really isn't that bad. But then I went to the States, I got some rental property in, in the States and then it was like closed within 30 days. I was like, whoa, well this is, I can see why when people come to Belize, they, they see that there's a little bit of a difference when it comes to titling, but just note that that's common as long as you and the seller are completing a purchase agreement that'll get registered with the lands department and everything is good to go. So just bear in mind, even if you don't have that physical title, the purchase is still registered with the lands department. Okay, financing is not usually 80% and the interest rates are usually higher than three to five percent. Yes, and sorry to slap you with that reality. Uh, you know, in North America and many other countries, we are very fortunate to have the ability to finance 80% of the purchase price. You only have to put 20% down. I know interest rates have been lower between three to 5% in the States. That's not the case here. While we work with Key International Bank, the bank I mentioned to, uh, to you a little bit earlier, uh, do note that their interest rates can range from 10 to 13% because you're a foreigner coming into the country. And so that is just typical for foreigners coming into the country. We're able to get some really great rates with them um, as ECI development, which I'm not gonna bore you with now, but just know that it's not going to be common for you to find that. Now, if you're working with a developer, the developer may have special financing, so bear that in mind. Or if you're buying a resale, sometimes you can negotiate a payment schedule with the seller. But you know, you're not as you as a foreigner are not going to be able to come into a local bank here in Belize and say, "All right, I'm buying a house on Pescador Drive, and I want to finance with you." They're going to be like, "You're not a Belize resident. You don't have a bank account with us." No. So just bear in mind that Key Bank is one of those banks that can finance for you as a foreigner, but they typically only finance up to fifty percent, five zero percent. Okay, another reality, quality, well-built property will cost you similar build prices as in North America. Sometimes people think because they're coming to a small mm -hmm. island that it's gonna be completely different, but we find obviously it's different. It is, and you know, the cost of concrete is the cost of concrete. And in North America, we are sort of expecting a lot of the luxuries that we have there. You know, you probably have grown up with um, hot water that's just not a common build practice here within Latin America. If you're living in a warmer climate, you probably have AC, especially if you're coming to moving to the tropics, you're expecting AC. That's not common. So you can get local built places, but it may not meet your expectations. If you're looking for that North American quality and standard, you're looking for a house that's built to hurricane category five standards. You're looking for a place that has hurricane proof windows. You're, you're going to pay, you know, similar in a sense to what you're paying in the States. Now it all is relative, you know, someplace in San Diego, California on the beach is probably going to be much more expensive than someplace on the beach here in, uh, in, in Belize, but just understand where you're really gonna make up some of the prices with the cost of labor. The cost of labor here is less expensive. But if you're looking for that hurricane category five beachfront bungalow for $30,000, 
I don't, sorry to ruin your hopes and dreams there, but uh, I just want to make sure you're aware of the reality. Okay, another reality. If you're from the U.S., the rental income from your, your Belize property does need to be reported. Yes, and you can go into that at much greater depth with your CPA and accountant. But I remember a few years ago, I was on a, a tour with, of one of our properties with a realtor and his client. And he was telling the client, oh, if you make your rental income, you can just put it here in a bank in Belize and you don't have to tell your, your, the IRS in the States. And I was like, oh my gosh, uh, I'm not a CPA, I'm not accountant, but I do know that you have to report any income that you make worldwide to uh, the US. If you're not from the US, you can talk to your accountant about what that looks like, but just a heads up that uh, you do need to make that happen. Okay, putting your condo in the rental market, get a professional manager. Again, at the beach bars you're hanging out, everybody's either a <laughs> realtor or they're a property yeah, manager. I was, I was so shocked the first time I started meeting people and I was like, oh man, they all do the same thing here. <laughs> so definitely you want to hire a professional manager, yeah. especially if you're not living here or close by or come regular, you want to make sure that your property is being taken care of. It's true. And, you know, I think a lot of us are jaded in a sense of Airbnb and the VRBO, where especially if you're living in the area where you have your rental property and you're able to easily check on it after you've gotten an Airbnb or a VRBO rental. If you're not living here, do not use Airbnb if you do not have a professional management company. You are going to be extremely disappointed. And you know, it's it's not uncommon for these these beach, uh, these beach bar property managers to be like, yeah, don't worry, we got it taken care of for you. Then they get an invite to go to, to, to Key Cocker for the day, the same day you have somebody coming in and checking in. And well, Key Cocker sounded more interesting than checking in your client. So again, think about these things, be smart about it, and don't necessarily let your experiences that you had in the States from your personal Airbnb influence the decisions that you make when you're buying rental property in Belize. Okay, another reality, closing fees can be expensive, but the mm -hmm. ongoing fees are much more affordable. Yep, and you know, that's something that I, I am gonna touch upon right over here. Um, and I note that as one of the cons of ownership of real estate here, but there's also a pro to this. While these costs, upfront costs are more expensive, the ongoing costs are significantly low. So I'm gonna to mention to you the cons first and then we'll jump into the pros, but note that closing costs are 8%. So 8% of the purchase price is what you as the buyer are going to be paying. And tip, if you're using an, an attorney, you don't have to, but if you want to, it's typically two to 3% more. Um, as we talked about, real estate titling can take time. And the reality is you do need to do extra due diligence when you're you're buying property here. And you know, not just property here, but property anywhere that's different for you. You need to really understand the market. You need to know who it is that you're buying from um, because all of these are going to be really important parts of the ownership process. But I do want to highlight the pros and, and write these down because I think that these are key factors why people are deciding to own real estate here. One is the low property tax. So I have a it's a smaller one bedroom place about 500 square foot condo and the property tax is about $300 US a year a year for a condo that's just a couple of blocks from the beach. In addition to that if you're planning to rent your home out your condo out the income tax is only 1.75%. So 1.75%, it's extremely low. Um, it's one of the lowest that I know. I know Columbia, I think, it, LJ, you're there in Columbia. You probably know it's a little bit better, but they try to think about 30% for your, your rental income. Uh, and then in addition to that, there is no capital gains tax. And this is significant, especially as we are witnessing appreciation here in the country. So let's say today you decide to own a Best Western condo for $110,000. If you sell it for $200,000 in five years, you pay no capital gains tax on that $90,000 profit here in Belize. You have to talk to your accountant and CPA about what you do in your home country, but it's a huge, huge pro for ownership of real estate here in this country. And so to make sure that you're making smarter ownership decisions, I would highly recommend that you reach out and request this global property resource kit that we offer. It is a white paper, it's educational, and it's really geared towards helping new buyers ask the right questions and learn as much about the marketplace as possible. One of my, one of my favorite parts in there is the 15 must ask questions when buying real estate overseas. And we alluded to it before, but asking a question like, is a plum for hot water? <laughs> it may sound silly to ask a question like that, but the reality 
is that it's not common here. And so if you're expecting hot water, when you turn on that left side of the faucet, it may not be hot. You know, you may be sitting there for a while as you're waiting for it to warm up. It happened to me. Did it? I didn't ask that question. And I was very surprised when I took my first shower in my apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, you think, oh, it's warm here, but no, when you get out of bed and you want that warm shower, you want that warm shower. All right, so now we're gonna jump into part three, which is explore, exploring the hottest spot in Belize. And, and the reality you know, pre-COVID is that Ambergris Key produces 70% of the tourism revenue. It's a small island. Ambergris Key, you see on the top right uh, part of the screen, it's a small island about 26 miles long, one mile wide at its widest point. It's an island that produces a majority of the revenue. And the reason for that is because of the location. It parallels the reef. And because of that, I mean, we look out our window over here and we can see the reef in the, in the, the near distance. So it, because of that, we have the divers, the fishermen, the snorkelers, the water bugs, people who like fly fishing, uh, who are coming here and, and, and enjoying the economy. So what you see on the island, this is the uh, close up of the island. And then everything is really centered around the San Pedro town. Some people use San Pedro and Ambergris Key synonymously but know that Ambergris Key is the island and San Pedro is the town. You can see it's that pink area there at the bottom part of the screen. Uh, and that's really where you find a lot of the action. That's where you find the restaurants and the, the, the live music and the things to do. Uh, the island is starting to expand and development you know, north and south of San Pedro. But when you're looking to be near the heart of everything, that's where it is. So it really just comes back to what are you looking for? Uh, you're looking for rental property, residential home. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're not even looking for a home. You're just listening to this for a vacation. And we certainly hope you come down for a, a little getaway. But when you're looking for real estate here, you, you want to follow the trends, especially if you're looking at it from that investment perspective. Is the airlift increased? Um, what do the tourism numbers look like? Are there large hotel brands? When, how long have they been there? Are they just starting to arrive? Belize really is an emerging market right now. Uh, we've seen that, you know, despite COVID, we, we see that it is continuing to be a popular popular place. The border reopened in October. We are continuing to get tourists down, uh, which is exciting and, and speaks a lot for the country. So it really is the right place at the right time. So here's a picture from the 1970s. And for those of you who've been on Ambergris Key before, look in the distance. I don't know if you recognize that location, but that is where the airstrip currently is where you see, follow my cursor, that green strip right over there. And then you see today. And you know, one point I want to make that I think is important is that while there has been a lot of growth in Belize over the, the, the past few decades, is one of the, the core beliefs of this country is sustainability and doing things as eco-friendly as possible. And so there are pretty strict building codes and restrictions in place in order to make sure that that's done, that's done and done well. And uh, you know, we've been on this island for about two, a little over two decades at this point. And as we continue to develop, making sure that we're integrating these green features are something that's really important. Uh, so you're from the 1980s. This is the airstrip, so now the airstrip is in. Uh, and today we have two beautiful terminals there for the local air carriers. Uh, here, we this is a beautiful, really charming, colorful, location and in the distance you can see the reef you see the white waves that's where the reef is located and then there's those waters so beautiful and our golf cart <laughs> yeah. a fun little thing and my friends and family that have never experienced the first time they come they get so excited they're like kids they're like oh we get to run on a golf cart around the island but it is really cool to go you know north to south go to secret mm -hmm. beach on the golf carts yeah, it's a, um, just a fun experience. It's true, and if you live here, some you'll find that some people tend to really soup their golf carts up. So you can <laughs> you can paint it whatever color you want. You can make it as you know personalized as you as you like. So it's a, a really beautiful location. Yeah, you might get kids asking for a ride into town at some point too. So one of the big reasons why people have been coming down to Belize for so long is because of the diving. Here's just a quick map highlighting all the different dive sites right off the coast of Ambergris 44. I'm sure there are more out there, but you can see why this would be a popular location for people who are passionate about diving. And there's some of the water activities we've talked about several mm -hmm. before. The fishing, they're known for fishing, for diving, snorkeling, kayaking. I took up sailing and I actually, awesome. I mean, I love it. You can take sailing lessons. So there's so many wonderful water activities here. 
Yeah, and then land activities too. And so some of these are in flux uh, just because of all that's going on, but hopefully there's a lobster fest uh, later on this year. It's the reintroduction of lobster and the menu opening of, of lobster season. Uh, wine Divine is one of the local wine and cheese places that has local socials. Uh, Costa Maya, which is a beauty pageant with the Central American countries. They bring an, art, an artist, international artist to come in Beautiful. and sing. Yeah, it is, it really is. And then uh, Crazy Canucks Sunday Fun Day. So if you would like um, any information about rentals, feel free to let us know and, and we can send that over to you. And then if you like getting involved in the community, maybe you're planning to live here and do something to get back, or maybe you just like to do something while you're on vacation. There are many different ways for you to get involved and we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Okay, we have another question. Where in Belize are two thirds of overnight visitors heading? Have you been listening? Find that <laughs> Q&A section. Placentia is A, B is Corazal, C is Ambergris Key, or D is Cayo District. And we'll give everybody just a couple of seconds here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm seeing, see, yeah, it looks like I think we got 100. Okay, almost 100% on that. Awesome. I'm happy, happy to see those folks. Uh, that have been tuning in. We'll go through the answers in, in just a little bit. And then here's the third tip. Bring small US dollar bills with you if uh, you're an American and you have access to US dollars. They do accept US currency here. And you, I would not recommend bringing large bills with you because you are able to use your smaller bills. It's also very difficult to exchange Belize dollars back to US dollars. So you don't need to try to do any conversions when you're here. Just bring those, those US bills with you and you can use them on the beach and the restaurants and the stores and whatnot. So let's see, how did you do? Yeah, so how many districts are there in Belize? And the answer is B, six districts. Uh, question number two is what holiday is celebrated on November 19th? And that is Garifuna Settlement Day. And then what part of the country produces two thirds of the tourism revenue or two thirds of the visitors going? And that is C, Ambergris Key. So I wasn't keeping track to see if you got 100%, but hopefully you recorded your answers there. And thank you so much for everybody for participating. So I'm gonna just quickly highlight a couple of different real estate opportunities for you on Ambergris Key, and then we're gonna jump right into the questions. So as mentioned, we're located on Ambergris Key, and if you're looking for a rental property or even a place to look, relocate to being in this part of Ambergris Key, uh, it really has its advantages. And so at the bottom part of the map, you can see there's the Marriott residences. So if you're looking to own property in a branded hotel on the beachfront, luxury property, four and a half stars, whether you wanna put in the rental market or you wanna live there full time, you have the ability to do so. There's also the Grand Bayman Best Western. Uh, so this is an ideal property for somebody who's looking for an entry level, entry price investment. Condos turnkey start about $113,000 US. You can find it's up to 80% of them. And then the other community is our tiny eco smart village test village that you see there on the left side. And that is a quick boat ride across the Ambergris uh, Bayside. It is considered Ambergris Key, that's West Ambergris. So you're not leaving the island, but you're just going across the bay over there, quick five minute ride. And uh, we're gonna just quickly highlight some, some photos for you here. Um, but we're able to, well, the webinar special, you can get under 113,000 if you're interested. Uh, this is the studio within the Best Western. We've started construction on this already. We will be finished by the end of this year, which I think is a good time to be entering the rental market, especially because there's a little bit of uncertainty over the next few months here. So being able to uh, to wait for the economy to, to build up, more people to come down. So it'll be brand new at the time that we're starting to see tourism start again. And then there's also the Marriott residences. So studios up to three bedrooms. We have turnkey options, including closing costs and furniture for under 400,000. And this is an ideal investment or ownership opportunity for somebody who's looking to be involved with the number one hotel brand in the world. The power that these two brands have that the Best Western and Marriott had is have is really incredible. And this is the, these are the brands that are able to put heads on beds. Marriott is the number one hotel brand in the world. And then Best Western is number seven. So what their jobs are, what they do really well is making sure that these places are occupied. So uh, this building will begin middle of this year and then it'll be about a two year build period. So again, entering the rental, the rental market at a good time. So as our way to say thank you, we're going to be sending you a Belize handbook and that'll get emailed to you after this webinar along with the recording. And I talked about the Belize Discovery Tour earlier. So March 18th through the 21st, put that 
in your calendar now. We would love for you to come visit and you can see these beautiful waters and experience a great time here on Ambergris Key. Yes, absolutely. And, and just reach out if you'd like more information. Uh, you know, it is, of course, subject to change just based on how everything's going, but it'd be a great way for you to get down here. And uh, we love showing off the, the beautiful island and letting people see opportunities that are available. So this is the resource guide I mentioned a little bit earlier, the Global Property Resource Kit. If you would like a copy of it, just email us there, info at ECI Development, and we will get a digital copy over to you. Okay, so with that, we're gonna just jump into the questions and we'll get them answered for you. If you have anything that pops up along the way, feel free to type those in and we will go from there. All right, here's from Mark. If I can buy condo now, your emails say how we can live in Belize with for $800 a month with rent, not condo mortgage. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what that means, Mark. Um, I don't, uh, rent typically, if you're looking for a long-term rental here, uh, starts at about, depends what you're looking for, but I know at our properties, it starts at about 850 US a month and then works up from there, but they're full condos, full kitchens, fully furnished. Uh, but it just depends on, on what it is you're looking for. We do have a cost list if you're interested in seeing how much it would be to live on the island. I mean, my best guess is probably about 2,500 to 3,000 a month, probably for a couple would be about right. Um, but it depends on, you know, do you want to go live like a tourist or do you want to live locally? And so a lot of those numbers will, will affect how it is that uh, you're, you're paying. All right, Camaro, this is a great question. Are you gonna cover the difference between citizenship and QRP? So uh, just to take a step back. So QRP is the Qualified Persons Retired Pro Retiree Program. With the QRP, it does not lead to citizenship. Citizenship, um, think about it as a passport. And there's a difference between a residency and a passport. Residency, uh, you it's basically a green card. It gives you permission to live in this country, to work in this country, uh, to be treated as a local, but you don't yet have that citizenship mm -hmm. status. If you want that citizenship status, if you want to get a Belize passport, then I would recommend you apply for residency through the regular investor, or the regular residency that Leslie mentioned, which you live here in the country for a full, full year. You're able to leave up to 14 days, but you're really committing yourself for that full year. Then after five years, you can apply for your passport or the other option is through the investor residency. And then after five years, you're able to apply for your passport. And you know when you're looking for your passport in any of these countries, uh, you really want to build your story. You want to build your case about why you should be a citizen. So I would highly recommend that you live here. You spend time here. You get involved here. Maybe you start a business or you're contributing somehow. And, you know, just because you meet that five year, that five year residency mark does not mean you automatically become a citizen either. You have to apply for it. So I hope that helps with the citizenship and, and QRP differences. Gold standard still in play for the hotel. That's from Patrick. Yes. So the Belize Tourism Board put um, in, in force or put in, in play a gold standard status for hotels, which means that it meets the certain standards that a hotel needs to meet in order to be COVID safe. So what that means is that if you want to come to the country and you want to stay here, you have to stay at a gold standard hotel or accommodations. You're able to find that full list on the Belize Tourism Board website. They give you a full list of all of the gold standard places in the country. When you come into the country, you're going to have to complete a questionnaire on a Belize health app. So you'll download the health app to your phone, complete that. And then one of the questions that they'll ask on there is where it is you're staying. Uh, so Ken was just saying, can the QRP lead to a second passport? And the answer is no. QRP is an annual renewal and it can never lead to a passport. Can somebody go as a visitor and apply for residency after this from Celine? Yeah, really good question, Celine. So when you come into the country as a tourist, you get a 30 day visa. And if you're going to stay longer than 30 days and you can go to the immigration office, we have one here on the island, you get your passport stamped for another 30 days. Once you get to about the six month mark, they're going to ask what you're doing here. Um, one of the big reasons that they want to, or one of the big things they're going to ask is how are you supporting yourself financially? And so they, they may want to see bank records and, and leases and all of that. And the big reason, Celine, is because people come here all the time. They love it and they want to start it. They want to get a job. They want to start working. But the jobs here are a little bit more difficult to get. A lot of them are reserved for Belizeans. So their big thing is just wanting to know how you're here, how you're, why you're here, how you're supporting yourself. But you can come and go. You can go back up to the States or to you know, Mexico through that flight from Can to Cancun. So there are definitely ways uh, to make it work. But you can apply for residency 
while you're here at, um, as a visitor. What happens if you invest and change your mind? What is the policy or any specific law? So that's a great question. I'm guessing that's alluding to the investor residency. Um, so over, over that five year period, it really is recommended that it is an investment. I doubt they come and check on you. I don't know though, they may. So I would say really try to keep it as an investment over the, the first five years um, before it becomes a permanent residency. Can you get grass fed beef and organic vegetables? I'll let you answer this one, Leslie. I would say yes. yes. <laughs> we have all of that yeah. here. Yep. Um, a lot of the meat comes obviously from the mainland and you have a lot of choices um, from the meat markets. It is a different experience when you go to the meat market here. So I will tell you, I had an aha moment the first time I went. <laughs> Um, and bought just ground beef. It was put in a little plastic like grocery bag and tied up and I was a little shocked at first, but uh, Rhineland meets on the mainland. I know yep. there's several more. There's uh, again, mm -hmm. several different meat markets here on the island itself. Yep. And then the vegetables, oh my goodness, they are fresh, they're amazing. There's little fruit and vegetable stands mm -hmm. all over the island and the boats come in and bring them fresh. I forget which day, cause it's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. real early. So you could go real early in the morning. I don't choose to do that. I go <laughs> to some of the local stands where the people are, are fabulous and get just any vegetables and things you could want. Yeah, but you know, it's true. I was in the, the States with one of my Belizean friends and we were eating chicken and he's like, your chicken in the States has no taste here. And it, you know, he's used to just having it taste have more tastes here in the country and you'll find that there is a lot more taste and especially when it comes to vegetables and fruits you know when you're in in a lot of this, the, the these developed countries there's a long shelf life for a lot of the fruits and vegetables and whether it's a pro or con your vegetables and fruit tend to get spoiled quicker because there's not as much preservatives really any preservatives in them so you're buying them from these local local stands that leslie mentioned and they're good for a few days but you know they're fresh and uh and they're going to have a lot of taste to it all right, Camaro is saying when we bought our lot, closing costs increased from purchase to titling. Uh, yeah, you know, that's a good point, Camaro. So a few years ago, titling fees used to be 5%, uh, and then they bumped it up to 8%. And I do have to say, though, that there was a trade off for that. So previously, if you purchased brand new property, you as the buyer were also charged 12 and a half percent GST general sales tax. So in addition to 12 and a half percent GST, you had that 5% closing cost which means 17 and a half percent closing costs when it comes to purchase of new property. Now, I think many of us would rather not pay that 12 and a half percent. So what ended up happening was um, altering the, the stamp tax to move from 5% to 8% and eliminating that GST. If you buy in a local Belizean company though, the closing costs are still 5%. Um, LJ is just saying, yeah, the fees in, the fees in Colombia are high. Ed is saying Lobster Fest is the best. Yeah, Lobster Fest. So Ed and his group were here with me a couple of years ago. We went to Lobster Fest and, and had a really great time. Uh, Selena is saying, are the two chains of hotels the only ones you have? Any villas, private homes, cottages, others? Yes, we do have a tiny home community. We do have villas. You don't have to also put your, your branded property in the rental program that can be yours. But we do have four different properties here on the island that we'd be happy to talk to you about as we learn more about your specific interests. Oh my gosh, Dusty. Dusty is one of our <laughs> Dusty is one of our, our clients over here. He's been to a lot of conferences with me and he goes, we got the answers correct. Do we get a, a tea cutting board? Dusty, join us for the tea webinar next Tuesday. And we're going to, uh, we'll give away a tea cutting board in that webinar Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. If anybody wants to join us for that webinar, just email us. But uh, nicely done, Dusty and Carolyn. Glad you got 100%. Uh, Bernadette said, what are the price ranges? I'm guessing you mean for the real estate. So for the Best Western property, uh, it ranges turnkey from about 113,000 for a studio up to about 400,000 for a three bedroom. And then for the Marriott project, it starts at about 400 turnkey for a studio, goes up to about 1.9 million for a three bedroom penthouse. Uh, the tiny homes are about $169,000 plus closing costs. And then we have two bedroom, two bath can out front condos for about 180,000. I know that was really quick. So just send us a message and we'll, we'll get those details over to you. Yes, Marsha. Marsha said, okay, well, where? I think you said would. Okay, where would you recommend to stay for a short vacation to the island? I have not been there before and want to look around. 
Uh, well, we can certainly give you some options with us. Otherwise, just let us know what you prefer. Some people are looking for more economical options. Others want full kitchens. Others want to be beachfront close to the actions. Others want to be beachfront away from everything. So Marcia, just send us an email. We can certainly give you um, more information. So Ed goes, tell the group more about the tiny homes on the water. So uh, yep, across the bay, and I can go back a couple of slides. So across the bay, you see where it says uh, here on the left-hand side, Test Village, we're building over the water tiny homes. Uh, we're really excited about that. We just broke ground on it, 20 homes in this first phase. We have one more available, by the way, if anybody's interested, I'm um, going for about 169,000. But it's a really unique concept for, uh, for the country. You're not allowed to build over the water structures that you live in. On Amber Grisky, uh, we had about two years worth of environmental clearance process in order to get the clearance. And the reason for that is because our property that we have, it's essentially, it's a lake, it's a tidal lake, and we're not in the marine reserve since it's private land. So we're really excited about that. We're doing it as eco-friendly as possible, uh, which we're just really thrilled about this unique opportunity, but starting construction end of this year, it'll be open. If anybody um, is interested in learning more, feel free to let us know. Sean is asking about our opinion and some of the areas here. Sean, reach out to us. I'd be happy to talk to you more about that specific area one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, Jerry, this is, this is a cute question here, Jerry. Jerry said, what about bugs, bobos, <laughs> and creepy crawlies? <laughs> All right, well, I'll give my opinion and Leslie gives hers, you know, you're, you're in the tropics and so you just have to, to be prepared for anything. Um, you know, I have, have had scorpions in my house before, but it's just the reality of living here and, you know, it's kind of equivalent to the, the spider or whatever you have in the States. And uh, you, you learn to get used to it. And some seasons, rainy season, you have more bugs than others, but that's pretty standard. So it's, it's fun though, there's some like, it's cool, you get lizards here instead. And so it's just a, a different sort of wildlife that if you're not from a tropical area, you, you just get used to. Yeah, geckos have become my friends. <laughs> and I will tell you a funny story. When I first moved here, I heard this chirping one night, like I was lying in bed. I was like, what? I thought a bird had gotten in my apartment somehow. And I was like trying to figure out how do I get this bird out of here? And I couldn't find it though. And then I found out that geckos make a chirping yep. sound. So <laughs> just so you know, if you come here and you hear birds when you're sleeping, it's really not. It's the geckos that come out at night. You got it. All right, I'm seeing a lot more questions come in. We um, have another webinar actually in a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna just answer the last couple of questions here. If I don't get to your question, I just see a lot. So um, what I would recommend doing is emailing us if we don't get to your question and email us with your question so we can get it info at ecidevelopment.com. I'll just put that email address back there on the screen. Uh, info at ecidevelopment.com and we'll get those to you. So the one here, one chance for the one from Tim. Pets yeah, so Tim's talking about the pets and the requirements. So uh, look up Baja, I think it's Baja.org, but Google it. And that will tell you all the requirements. It's super easy to bring your pets in. You just have to get the rabies and certain things in the States, the International mm -hmm. Health Certificate. When you come in at the airport, you stop through Baja. They make everything super simple. There's a form you fill out prior to, but go there, Google it. You can find all the information. Yeah, perfect. And then the other question I'm seeing here is about safety. Um, and, you know, I think we can both answer this. We both came to the country as single women and, you know, we have a golf cart, we travel around. I, I'll speak for myself in this one, but I, I do feel very safe here. And I live on an island. It's just about making smart decisions. You're not going to go into a new neighborhood at three in the morning after you've been to a bar. You know, right. you have that kind of common sense everywhere. I lived in New Orleans for a little bit and, you know, you go one block too far and you could be in danger. So. Uh, here, it's there's a lot of really good areas, safe areas. It's also a small community, so people know you, and I think that just helps from that that comfort yeah. perspective and I as well. Completely agree with everything she said. I've been <laughs> here, and I've never not felt safe here. Exactly, and you know, we go to the mainland and rent cars there. I think you know the one concern when we go to the mainland is how good are the roads? You know, that's <laughs> like, is my car going to make it up these hills? But other than that, it's it's a really safe place. And then just last question is, are you free to move around the country right now? Uh, the answer to that is yes, there are certain districts uh, that you're not encouraged to go to just because the numbers have been higher there. But uh, as Leslie mentioned, we were in, in San Ignacio over the weekend. And so, it, you know, you're able to get to the country, rent a car, be in a car, go in a, a transportation vehicle that's called standard. So you do have the ability to, uh, to, to travel around. 
All right, ladies and gents, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Leslie, you did a fantastic thank you. job. I had a blast. We have to do this again. We certainly do. We look forward to hearing from everybody and looking forward to seeing you on the island yes. at some point. Come visit us soon and believe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.